Recent weeks have seen American society coming to grips with the stings of injustice and racism, which though endemic for many years, have once again come to the forefront of the national conscience of America after the murder of George Floyd in Minnesota. Following specific advice from the head of the worldwide Ahmadiyya Muslim community on Wednesday, July 1st, the Public Affairs Department of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA hosted the first of its virtual events entitled Supreme Justice, with this first part focusing on addressing the question, what now? The event was attended by over 1,500 people and was co-moderated by Amjad Mahmoud Khan Sahib, who serves as the National Secretary of Amore Kharja Public Affairs for the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA, as well as Maharshala Ali. Amjad Sahib began the event by explaining to the online audience why the community chose the phrase Supreme Justice. We title this series Supreme Justice. Now the term Supreme Justice is one that has been very recently used by the international spiritual leader of our community, His Holiness Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmad, in the wake of the George Floyd murder over a month ago on Memorial Day. It is a term, Supreme Justice, that's inspired by the verses of the Quran that speak about how justice is paramount. It's also a term inspired by the example of the founder of Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who said in his famous farewell sermon over 1500 years ago that no white person is superior to a black person and no Arab is superior to a non-Arab. The event featured panelist remarks from world-renowned scholar and clinical psychologist, Dr. Joy DeGruy, and U.S. Congresswoman Karen Bass, who chairs the Congressional Black Caucus. Can policy changes, can they go as far as to impact the hearts? Getting the policy passed and getting it signed by the president is really kind of the first step. Then you have to fight for implementation. And I'm an organizer at heart. So to me, the policy is a necessary vehicle, but it is most certainly not enough. The policy can be used in a lot of ways. I think you change people's hearts through education, through interaction, through relationships. And I think that the policy can help with those things. You absolutely need it, but it will not, does not solve the, uh, the problems. Seeing the, this kind of uprising today is symptomatic that it's not only us that see this, uh, that other communities are seeing it too, and they're stepping out. And this is a wonderful thing that we can, we can, we can see so many black people, but also white people, Asians, Arabs, um, uh, South Southeast Asians, Chinese. You know, all kinds of people come out and say that what we're seeing, structural violence, structural injustice against black people, needs to stop. And we want to build a new, not just a new America, a new world. I mean, that's what people are really saying. They're saying it with their bodies. They're saying it with, with their hands. They're saying it with, with every part of their being. And what people are showing is what side they want to be on. And this is a first. And so with this comes an extraordinary opportunity um, and, and a proposition that it's possible yes. that we can reclaim our humanity and move forward for the first time. There were an overwhelming number of questions from those in attendance who were tuning in both by Zoom as well as a Facebook live stream. The thought-provoking discussion lasted two hours, with attendees asking for more such deep conversations as a critically needed antidote to the problem of racial injustice. This is Miriam Ellen Ahmed reporting from MTA International USA Studios.